Thank you.
What a saver you are, Jesus. What a saver you are, Jesus. We love lifting your name up before the world so that everyone will hear the good news. Love has come and found a way to save us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. song of old and the angels bending near with harps of gold and there in the manger oh what a savior peace on the earth tonight goodwill to men you see the pain and strife you enter in your goodness is greater what a savior you come to make this world your home Emmanuel we're not alone you are shining in the dark your love has come to make it right make it right hope and joy to every heart your love has come to make it right make it right you've come to make it right we bow before you now O king of kings we lay our burdens down you set us free forever and ever Oh, what a Savior! We sing the glories of your name, Emmanuel, the God who saved. You are shining in the dark. Your love has come to make it right. 
Christmas changes everything. It means we could know God in a way we couldn't before. It means we have God with us, someone who would experience what we experience. It means we have a Savior, the one who could take our place so that our sins could be forgiven and we could be made new.
To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus.
the beautiful thing about Christmas is that we get to celebrate the beginning of something amazing. Not only do we remember and celebrate Christ's birth, but we celebrate newness of life. Not just the new life of Jesus, but the new life he brings to us. When we believe in Jesus, our sins are washed clean and we become whiter than snow. If you notice today, we have decorated the church in all white. We hope that when you come and sit and you see white decor, that you remember Jesus loves you and Christmas makes everything new.
Hey, can we just say uh, for our kids, our worship arts team, uh, AV Tech uh, men and women up at the top, uh, let's give them all a hand. Great job. Man, that was phenomenal. Just a great job. And uh, uh, their investment in us to lead us into the presence of God and worship the King of Kings the Son of God, and uh, oh, thank you, team, for leading us in that. It's just a, a great reminder to us of what this season is all about, Jesus Christ. Uh, this morning, I just want to share with you a few brief minutes before we let you go, and uh, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a setup for next Sunday, okay, because I want you to hear what I have to say for just these few minutes, and I want you to think of it not only as to how it applies to your life, but how it applies to the lives of people who are not here today. You see, God brings people into your life and my life, family, friends, people in the neighborhood, people we work with, people we go to school with, and they need to hear the message of Jesus Christ. They need to hear what Jesus Christ can mean to them and what he can do for them. And so uh, this next Sunday, a week from today, we're going to be talking about a verse of Scripture that you've seen woven throughout this morning's program. It's a prophecy that was made about Jesus Christ nearly 700 years before he was born. It's found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. And many of you are familiar with it. We can get it up on the screen here behind me. It says, for, us, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And those four descriptions of who Jesus Christ is really target four very critical needs that you have and I have in our lives. And not only us, but those are needs in the lives of everyone, people who are not here this morning. So I just want to talk through them for just a couple of moments because what I'm hoping is that the Holy Spirit is going to bring somebody across your path. Perhaps He already has. And you're going to reach out to them, and you're going to say, hey, why don't you come to church with me next Sunday? What is it? Uh, December 8th today. Next Sunday is December 15th. We're getting to that season of the year where some people who might be a little hesitant to come to church might show up, and they're just looking for a place to go or an invite from somebody like you or me. So I want us to hear the Word of God this morning, really through the ears of those who are not with us this morning. Those I'm praying God will give you an opportunity to invite them to come with you next Sunday. So let's just think about that verse. You know, what do we really need in life? We've been talking about presents and gifts. What do we really need in life? Well, one thing that we all need is someone to guide us. We need someone to guide us. And so what does God provide us in Jesus? He provides us a wonderful counselor. Not only that, but in this life, we all need, I need it, you need it, the people who aren't here need it, everybody needs it. We need someone to rescue us because our sins have condemned us, not only to physical death, that's bad enough, but even worse than that, eternal death, eternal separation from God. And we can't rescue ourselves by our own good deeds. We need a, a mighty God to step in and rescue us. What do we need? Well, we need somebody to guide us. Well, Jesus is a wonderful counselor. We need somebody to rescue us. Jesus is the mighty God. We also need somebody to provide for us. You have so many needs in your life, and so do I. We are finite, frail people. We've got material needs. We've got physical needs. We've got emotional needs. We have spiritual needs. And, and who does God provide for us to meet those needs? He provides His Son, Jesus Christ, referred to in Isaiah chapter 9 as the everlasting Father. Next Sunday, we're going to talk about what that means. And then lastly, something that you need, I need, the people who are not here need, the human condition, it creates this need. We need someone to calm us. Through the twists and the turns of this life, it's unpredictable. We don't know what's around the corner for any of us. We don't know what 2020 holds for any of us. Only the Lord knows that. And that can be a very unsettling thing, except God provided for us in Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Everybody needs the Prince of Peace in their life. And so I just want you to think about it for a moment. Uh, who are the people in your life who need guidance? Who are the people in your life who need rescued because of their broken and lost condition? 
Who, who are the people in your life who have needs that need to be provided for? Who are those in your life who are stressed out and anxious and they need the calming influence of the Prince of Peace? Well, well the, the people in your life, that, that's your mission field. Would you reach out to them? Say, why don't you come to church with me next Sunday? We're going to be talking about four really uh, important needs that all of us have. And, and just, it's the Christmas season. Maybe they've just been waiting on somebody to reach out to them and invite them. We'll talk about that more next Sunday. Well, uh, this morning you came in, and, and uh, wow, the, the, the team did such a phenomenal job in leading us in worship. And then you may have noticed all these presents down front. Uh, we don't have these down here every Sunday. If you're a guest with us, this is, this is something that we don't have uh, every Sunday. But, so all these presents, and you might think, well, th those are probably just props for the, for the Christmas presentation, the celebration, but they're not. They, these are real presents, okay? There are things inside these boxes. Um, and what these presents represent, is the generosity of this church family. And, um, you know, I don't say it enough, but I just want to say thank you to all of you who give and uh, invest in this ministry here at Liberty. Um, thank you for your generosity. These gifts represent this, our, the, the generosity of this church. So we have a ministry here uh, at Liberty called Liberty Moms. And, <laughs> and they are an energetic group uh, and a generous group, obviously. Um, so Liberty Moms is, is a great ministry that if you give here, you support that ministry here at Liberty. It's a, it's a wonderful ministry that reaches out to moms, helps meet their uh, emotional and spiritual needs for fellowship and help them grow in the Lord. It's really a great support ministry uh, for moms here in our community. And um, April Walker oversees that with her leadership team. And, and in just a moment, I'm going to show you a brief video of April describing, you know, what these gifts are all about because they really represent um, the generosity of the hearts of the people of liberty. And that's one of our values here at this church. We want to cultivate the joy of generosity. And this time of year when we celebrate uh, God's goodness and his great gift in Jesus Christ, it, it's, a, it's a great time to emphasize following his lead and being generous. And so uh, I'll let April tell you more about that. We want to get our offering team to come on up if they would, please. And again, I just want to say thanks to all of you in 2019. God has been so generous to our church, and you have reflected that generosity. Uh, he has given us so many opportunities to make a difference in this community and around the world uh, through your gifts of generosity. So I just want to say thank you for that, and, and we celebrate that as we come to year's end of how faithful God has been through your giving. Some of you give in the offering, some of you give online, however you do it. Uh, I just want you to know uh, uh, you're cultivating a spirit here that really is making a difference. Um, so I want to pray for us, and then I want you to take a look at the video as April describes uh, what these gifts are all about, okay? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather this morning to celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, the wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Uh, what, a, what a joy it is to know Him and to worship worship Him this morning. Father, I want to pray this morning for each person in this audience. Maybe some came today with heavy hearts. I pray that your Holy Spirit would touch them and strengthen them and encourage them today. And Lord, I want to say thank you on behalf of our entire church family for making this a place where generosity is practiced. And uh, we celebrate the way you use this church to be your hands and feet in this community and around the world. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Take a look. Liberty Moms is a ministry here at Liberty. We minister to moms with kids of all ages. Our purpose really is to encourage, grow, and love on these women um, and help them to grow closer to God and to their husbands and their children. Our service project that we decided to work on this year is called Grandparents Raising Grandchildren. Um, this is a support group that is based in Harnett County, and it was such an eye-opener to see the amount of families who are struggling here in the community. This group supports grandparents 55 years and older who are raising their grandchildren 18 years or younger. So meeting the basic needs of these grandchildren is such a struggle for a lot of these families, much less providing a wonderful Christmas for these grandchildren. So Liberty Moms decided to adopt these grandchildren. We had a total of 20 families. We adopted 31 kids out of those 20 families. It was such an amazing experience to be able to see these ladies uh, truly give from their hearts the generosity that I've seen being 
poured out for these grandchildren. These ladies just took such ownership in buying for these children as a way of providing for them when they could not otherwise have had a wonderful Christmas. Is that not worth celebrating? Isn't that great? Let's give the Lord a hand for his, for the way he uses our church. Liberty Moms, thank you so much for setting a great example for our church. And I want to, and thank you to everybody who, who contributes here for supporting ministries like Liberty Mom. That is an awesome outreach in our community. Uh, not only are we able to provide some material gifts for them, but we also provide them spiritual gifts. We provide them uh, 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 materials to help guide them and direct them to faith in Jesus Christ. So again, thanks to April and the whole team at Liberty Moms. Phenomenal job. Uh, hey, uh, before we let you go, just a couple of announcements. First of all, this Friday evening, Hillary, come on up. Hillary over sees our uh, women's ministry here at Liberty. They've got an event coming up she'll tell you a little bit more about. Hi, ladies. This coming Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. in the student building, we'll be having our women's ministry Christmas um, dinner. It's a potluck style. Bring your favorite Christmas dish. Um, we have a chocolate fountain. But we would love to see you come out. Um, it's a time when we can just step away and take a couple hours out of our very busy holiday schedules and focus on the Lord. Um, we have a speaker, we have some Christmas music, and we get to fellowship and just enjoy each other. It's a great way to connect and um, enjoy community together. Uh, we do have child care available for the event. It is a free event. Child care registration will close on Wednesday. So if you're interested in coming, you can go online, register yourself, register your kids. We'd love to see you come out. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Hillary. Last thing, if you're a guest with us this morning, I want to encourage you to fill out this little information card. Uh, it's our way of getting to know you. If you've never dropped one of these off at the information table out front, you can pick up a free gift. But on behalf of all of us here that call Liberty Our Church Home, we want to say welcome to the House of Friends. We are so glad that you spent part of your Sunday with us, and I hope it's been an encouragement to you. Uh, also, uh, if you're a guest, if you're, today's your first time, or you've been coming to Liberty for maybe a month or two, and you want to learn more about this church and how you can get connected and how this church could help be a blessing to you and your family, we have something here called our Guest Luncheon, our Next Steps Guest Luncheon, and that is actually today in about 15 minutes. So if you don't have any lunch plans, guests, you ought to just stick around and join us in the building next door here. It's our Family Life Center. Somebody will be over there to direct you. Child care is provided. We'll give them lunch. We'll provide you with lunch. Answer any questions you might have. You don't need to register for it, okay? Just, uh, just head on over there. It's about 45 minutes. Uh, we'll have you out of here at a, at a decent hour, but we'd love to get to know you better and answer any questions you might have about this church, all right? Hey, listen, if anybody needs prayer before you leave today, come on up. We'll be happy to pray with you. Uh, otherwise, have a great week, and remember that you are loved.